one home to be sold. And these five realtors are hoping to sell it. They each bring their own talents and experience to the table. But at the end of the day, only one of them will walk away with the listing. It's all down to who can convince the seller that they are the best. Who will the seller choose as the best one for the job? It's Game On, on Seller's Market. I found this piece of property, which is uh, just shy of two acres, and thought, eh, I can build a house. And uh, so we got some quotes, and uh, and then uh, I wanted, I knew what I sort of wanted out of a house, uh, and so I designed it myself. Doug didn't stop at designing his own house. 2009, I started building a massive workshop for uh, a motorcycle company I started in 2007. And it was supposed to just be run out of there, but then Winfield came along and said, oh, you're not supposed to be running a big business out of your yard. And I was like, okay. Doug moved his motorcycle business to another building in Kelowna, but then he met his partner, Shannon. How did we meet? I saw you across a crowded room. Uh, our eyes locked. <laughs> it was instant magic. Yeah, it wasn't POF. <laughs> it was not online dating. <laughs> That's too embarrassing. <laughs> but it was. <laughs> Shannon lives in Victoria, so Doug rented out his custom-designed home to live with her there. But then... We were watching HGTV, <laughs> yeah. and uh, we, I saw this little place called Utila, and I was like, that's so cool. So I said to Shannon, I said, book some tickets, we'll, we'll go in two weeks. We got a hold of a realtor there, looked at a bunch of houses there, fell in love with one in particular. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and got back and phoned the renters and said, sorry. <laughs> need to sell the house so I can afford to do this. There's something about your front yard sloping into green water that just makes you want to be there. So now the plan is to sell it all and move to the Caribbean. The plan has some mixed reactions. Well, a lot of what people say is nobody does that. You can't do that. And we're like, well, why not? You know? If you don't take a chance in life, you only get one kick at the can. So why not give it a shot and see where you go with it? So. How much does Doug think his Kelowna home is worth? Somewhere in the high 900s. So I'd like to try it, you know, 999,000. 99 cents. And maybe in the 99 <laughs> cents. <laughs>
and it goes right in through to the bathroom, which is perfect. It's got a tub and a shower, which is unique. This is um, an impressive master suite. So we're in the lower level of the house and I guess this is the third level of the four level split, which is actually quite a unique layout. So we've got three bedrooms downstairs. They're decent size. Closets are good. Um, nice big windows, nice size bathroom over here. Um, I think it's perfect for people with teenagers or preteens. The basement houses a self-contained one bedroom rental suite. I like having a suite in any home. I think this one's nice. It's good, bright, open, goes out into the backyard. You have some yard space there. I think a potential revenue could be maybe a thousand, maybe 1100 bucks a month on this. It's got a large island kitchen. It's even got a dishwasher. All in all, this is a fabulous rental suite. Great for extra added income or the in-laws. The home sits on a large lot and has several outbuildings. Well, this is a lovely private estate style property. It's got a long gravel driveway. For anyone that has a lot of toys, this is gonna be perfect. There's also a 1600 square foot workshop, which was originally built in 2009 for a home-based business. Wow, this is the ultimate man cave. Look at this garage. It's got huge ceilings. You could put a lift, work on your vehicles. This is every guy's dream. Tons of toys. Mezzanine upstairs, they could put a lounge area up there if they wanted to. The possibilities here are just endless. There is no guy or girl that wouldn't think this is absolutely amazing. These are really hard to come by and there are a lot of people that want to have this additional shop workspace on their property. So it's gonna check some boxes for a lot of interested buyers. I'm really excited about this. What are the realtor's first impressions of this unusual property? This property is great. I mean, I, I can't count the, the amount of times that I've gotten a buyer call me saying, you know, I have a, a business that I run, I own dump trucks, a landscaping business, something like that, where they're looking for somewhere that they can park a bunch of cars. This is called a three level split and it's clearly a custom build. You can tell that this isn't a standard floor plan from a builder that you'd see regularly in a subdivision. So the owner had obviously really put his personal touches and thoughts into the layout. I think the layout of the um, upstairs is quite interesting. It's, it's actually nice that the master bedroom is on the top level and there's three bedrooms on the lower level uh, with the kitchen and living area in the middle. So, you know, the mom and dad can definitely, you know, throw the kids downstairs in the basement and have their nice private time upstairs in their master bedroom. An incredible shop, which is just amazing. It looks like a commercial style garage. So any guy that likes to work on, um, you know, carpentry or vehicles, he's got skidoos and jet skis in there. Uh, someone who likes to work on boats, um, they're gonna love it. Are there any potential problems with selling this home? A property this size does make it a little bit harder to sell. I mean, it's not the, standard family home that you get. So there's only a certain amount of demographic that's looking for it, but people that like their acreage land really like their acreage land. So we might not get as many showings, but it'll definitely appeal to a good group of people. Coming into this home, you know, it brings me back to the 2000s. Everything is very beige. Uh, the finishings are just okay. Um, whoever's gonna be coming in here is gonna definitely wanna do some upgrading um, and bringing it up to today's standards for sure. And why do they think they should get the listing? I think I have an edge because I'm going to be able to talk to him about working in the auto parts store. I'm going to be able to talk to him about being around that type of stuff growing up and that I can be able to relate to buyers on that level. I think that that might be important to him. I'm going to meet with the sellers first. I think that's a great strategy. Um, you want to be either first or last because you're the most memorable. Um, I'm going to kill them with kindness. I'm going to explain to them how I'm going to sell this house. I think my plan to do videography and aerial photography is going to be something over and above my competitors today that he'll he'll be attracted to. I'm gonna emphasize my excellent customer service skills and hands-on approach to every listing, and hopefully we make a, a connection on a personal level. This 3,000 square foot custom build sits on a two acre lot with a workshop most can only dream of. What are the sellers looking for from their realtor? I would like a realtor that would get me top buck. 
We want one million dollars. <laughs> one million dollars. <laughs> yeah. For us, customer service is, um, you know, you should probably care a little bit about your clients. <laughs> Just a little bit. Because <laughs> it's all great when it's a seller's market. Yeah. But when it's not a seller's market, then people, you want to be remembered and called back when you're selling a house. And the realtor we use in Victoria, he's not getting another phone call back. So customer service is high on the seller's priority list. Which of the four realtors can offer the best? First to try is Marika. Um, well, I'm here to let you know why I'm the best agent for this job. I wanted to talk to you about a little bit about what it's going to take to sell this home. So there are a few things that I wanted to really touch on. Um, first of all, we got to figure out we kind of know based on what the home is, what kind of market we're going to be going after. Um, I really like, this is a family home. I mean, everything from coming into the front door, this space around here, the living area, the kitchen, it's nice and open. You know, having the kids downstairs with the three bedrooms, um, the master bedroom upstairs is kind of your personal retreat um, and all the space outside for toys and for playing. Um, it's definitely a family home. So I think that's going to be your target market. I liked her. I really felt at home with Marika right away. Very personable. Yeah, yeah. She was really bubbly and I felt myself getting excited while she was talking about the house. And Emotion sells homes. When a person walks into a house, they know. Like I could show properties over and over again, but it's that first feeling when they come in, they see it, they feel it, and they think this is it. Like we want to live here. What we're trying to do is create emotion for the next people coming in. <laughs> so we can use everything that you loved about this house for the next young family that's gonna move in here. So we can do that with photography, you know, staging. Um, I was even thinking of doing some fun photos outside, you know, in the spring, kids playing, stuff like that. So- I thought that was a great idea. Yeah, I was kind of wondering who it would be though. But like if it was staged kids. <laughs> You'd <laughs> have to be staged now. kids. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I came in here, I drove in and I thought, oh, this is a million dollar listing, we're gonna do it. Um, I walked through a little bit and based on my comparables, um, I'm kind of between the 950 to a million dollar mark. Um, based on what's going on in the market, you could ask a little bit more. Usually if we price it a little bit higher, it will sit a little bit longer. Um, or, you know, pricing it a little bit lower and possibly getting a multiple offer situation. Marika's personality seemed to click with the sellers and they liked her unique marketing ideas. She was vague when it came time to recommend a listing price, suggesting somewhere between 950 and $1 million. Will that count against her? Next to pitch is Daryl. Something really cool happened for me today when I came in here and walked into that shop. I grew up down in the South Okanagan. I worked at an auto parts store for about three years. That thing's set up better than any auto parts store I've ever been in. But it reminded me of all the fun times, being around all those machines, being around some of the auto parts, it was cool. Um, it's very rare for us where we get to sell something that really excites us. So I wanna use that excitement in all different aspects of my marketing. Well, I like that idea because if you're excited about something you can sell, it's easy to sell. I know you made up this floor plan, it works really well, but it'd be nice to see how the rooms interact with each other. So we use a technology called 3D walkthrough Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, so basically, you can walk through the entire house. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and you can go into different rooms. That way you get to see, okay, where are the bedrooms? How are they situated? How does it work? I loved how techy he was. I, the iPad with the program where you could see the whole house, and that's great. Uh, sorry guys, I got a little bit rattled here for a second, I don't know why. Um, when people call me looking for this type of property, what I want to do is I want to go out and find those people. Aside from putting on MLS, I want to make a list of people that have landscape companies, people that have construction companies. I want to put a package together and get that to them. Maybe they want to buy it, maybe they have friends or family in the industry that would like to buy it. I liked his ideas too. He has some yeah, great ideas. Yeah, he had some ideas. great ideas. So it was, it was, when he was talking, it was like, oh my gosh, I like yeah. that. I would want to list this property at 969, 979. Again, you're the one that signs the contract. You're the one that sets the listing price. His excitement about the property really came across. And Daryl also has some great marketing ideas. He suggested a listing price of up to $979,000. Next up is Amanda. Knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? Amanda Wester, I'm your new realtor. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you both. Great house. Thanks. Yeah, um, I built my home around the corner in Sage Glen. I know what it's like to build. 
and there's a lot of thought that goes into every aspect of the home and I think you've done some really amazing things. I loved her professionalism. I wanted to see her arm wrestle you. She might have won. She would definitely have won. <laughs> <laughs> the consumer is no longer just driving around looking at for sale signs, right? The internet dominates the real estate world. So we want to make sure that we're going to be everywhere that your buyer could be looking. So how do we maximize exposure? We're going to do the three basic things that any realtor you choose is going to do. Put it on MLS, throw on a lockbox if you know the tenants are okay with it, and then get it on realtor.ca. That's where a lot of agents stop. They just sit and they wait for calls, okay? Yeah. So I go way above and beyond. So I'm going to hire a professional photographer, a professional videographer, and a drone. And the reason I do that is because I want them to fly over and show how close we are to the wineries, to the lake, the property aerially. I wanna show full 360 degree tours of every room in the house. I'm going to walk through on screen and explain the features. And so that's how I, I approach my listings with just pop them out, make them really stand out, not just some corny little pictures on MLS, okay? I think she would sell this house. It would happen. She obviously so. goes, she does, she drives a but very I, fancy car. I'm not, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure she'd give Doug his emotional needs during the sale. <laughs> Which is okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My recommended list price is 9899 Okay, based on my comparables and my research, that is where I think that we realistically should be. We should be able to generate some, some good interest and action at that price. And my focal point is really gonna be the shop space. I think that's what makes the property so unique. There is going to be a car enthusiast or somebody that wants to run a gym or some kind of a shop business that's going to be all over it. Amanda's professionalism and drive hit home with the buyers. And she suggested listing at 989,000. 10,000 more than Daryl's price and very close to the seller's target. Last to pitch is Luke. So um, I'm curious what uh, is important to you in a realtor and especially for this beautiful home here. For me, the most important thing is all about the money. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get a good price and... You want to get the best price. Yeah obviously the best possible price. And it seems that it's important to you that you get good customer service. Yes, it, that would be very important. That a, uh, a realtor's responsive keeps you in the loop and informs you everything that's going on, gives you updates, is that? Yeah, that's very important. Yeah, I like to know what's going on, I'm curious. Yeah. That's a great quality that he had was, he put us at ease, we felt really at ease with him and stuff. He's pretty personable. Mm -hmm. So before Kelowna, I lived in Nelson, BC. Mm -hmm. Before Nelson, Edmonton. Before Edmonton, Cayman Islands. Oh. Uh, so before, how, why did you get back here? Because uh, that's where so we're heading. Long so. story. You're heading to the Cayman Islands. Not no, the Cayman, not sure. but the Caribbean. Oh, well, yeah. I also lived in Dominican Republic in Florida, so I can tell you all about it. It's uh, amazing. I have a beautiful 12-year-old daughter, and I met her mother in the Cayman Islands. So that's the... Short answer why I'm back in Canada. We had a lot so. of life experience, which was great. Um, Our big question is always, what do you think it's worth? Oh, good question. I think um, high nines be a little bit tough. And I say this not because there's anything wrong with this house. It's beautiful in every respect. Based on current market, I think 948 is the right price. Luke's pitch was relaxed and personable, which put the sellers at ease. However, at 948,000, his suggested listing price was the lowest of them all, and well below the seller's target. All four realtors have given it their best. Now it's time for Doug and Shannon to decide who they will choose. Luke kind of questioned us, almost like seeming like we were, he was looking to find out more of what we wanted so he could tailor what he was gonna to say to that. So instead of selling himself to us. He also came in at the lowest yeah. out of everybody. And it's never good to say you're gonna get the least amount of money. Luke is out. No, I liked him, he, he was very personable too. Um, that was another, another thought to, and maybe give it. He had a decent pitch, 
but yeah, I don't know. He just seemed too nervous. Yeah, that would be that would be the one thing we the one downfall probably is um, sometimes when you see someone and you understand it's a different scenario, but if they're nervous here, are they going to be like that in front of the buyer? We want someone who is very confident, very self-assured. Daryl is out as well, so it's down to the final two. With Daryl and Luke both out, it's down to either Amanda or Marika. I think Amanda could probably sell this house the quickest, the best. Yeah, I think she'd probably sell it the fastest, that's for sure. You know, she'd get everyone in, get everyone out. So do we want somebody that'll do it fast or do we want somebody that'll do it to the best of our needs? No, I think the best of our needs is probably, I don't know, it's, it's a life journey and I think you gotta, you know, have the person that's we're most comfortable with. It's not, I mean, it's about the money. <laughs> it's all about the money. <laughs> it is about the money, but you also don't want to make the process any more difficult or harder than it has to be. So in, after all of that, in the end, we chose Marika. So Marika wins it. Oh my God! <laughs> Big win. <Yes>! <laughs> nice work. Six months down the road, what's happened? Well, it went pretty good. It took about two weeks before somebody made an offer. It was a little low at first and took almost another two weeks to, to try to get them up to where we were happy and they were happy. And uh, yeah, it ended up working out. That one we had listed for $9.89 and it sold for $9.60. I think the client is happy. I think the new owners are happy. So overall it went really well. With the Kelowna house sold, how is the Caribbean house purchase going? We're pretty confident that it's all good. Yeah. Well, the boat slip goes through today. It's yeah. going through right now. So that part, we own a boat slip. <laughs> Guess For we sure. could live in it if we had to. <laughs> it comes with a 10 by 20 garage, yeah. <laughs> no windows, but <laughs> open the big door for a great view. <laughs> They're awesome people. They're, they have this adventure planned, which is so amazing. And I'm just really glad that I was able to be part of it. it was, it's really awesome. I'm glad things worked out for them, for sure.